طبعا بحب اشكر معالي النقابه ومعالي النقيب على دعوتي شرف لي ان انا اكون متواجد مع حضراتكم اساتذتي وزمايلي في العلاج الطبيعي والحضور الكرام. بدايه لموضوعنا النهارده احب اقول ان once we have a patient diagnosed with cancer our aim of cancer treatment is mainly three parts. First, we are aiming to reach cure. Second, even with those cancers that are resisting for cure rate, our aim is to improve the survival. Survival may be disease-free survival, progression-free survival, and reaching an overall survival for the patient, living long. But we have not to forget, while aiming for both the last uh, two aims, that our main aim is to improve the quality of life. Statistics and numbers are facts, which mainly guide our practice to develop the guidelines to reach a better cancer management. Sometimes misinterpretation or misconception about those facts can develop a myth. Maybe it has some kind of facts, but now it can be converted to a myth. On daily practice, when we have a patient that recently diagnosed in cancer, he came to the clinic just thinking about a lot of sentences. One of these sentences is, I'm having a cancer. Cancer is a death sentence. And as I hear and as I experience from a lot of the patients that there is no cure for cancer. And maybe this is developed because of my bad habits or my being obese and overweight. And finally, what I'm going to do in the coming days or months, I'm, I'm going to do to lose my physical activity, especially during the treatment. Maybe these are started with the facts, but we have to prove, is it a fact or a myth? Starting with our epidemiology, according to the NIH, yes, it's a truth that cancer is the second leading cause of death among all causes of death worldwide. Coming after the heart diseases, and for heart and cancer, they may cause more than 50% of death. But when we go to compare number of the new cases diagnosed versus number of cases which suffer death, at the same year, we can find that in the last 10 years, the curves are started to separate. Yes, we have maybe a stage a steady or a stationary course of increasing number of cancer cases, but regarding mortality, it is declining over the last 10 years. Going further, to test the five-year survival. Five-year survival is the incidence of the patient diagnosed with cancer can live for five years. Maybe now we reach 10 years and more than 10 years, but we see that we started from 50% only, reaching in the 2020 more than 70%. And we are going forward. It's a promising data that we are doing good and having an inclining curve of five-year survival. But we have to know that even, even with those five-year survival, we have to know that the incidence of having cancer, the median age at diagnosis is 60, 60, 66 years old and more than 50% of cancer occur more than the age of 65, although it can affect any age group. But we have here a promising data. The last data for the all cancer cases, whether the diagnosis is breast, GIT, or lung, or whatever. But when we're going more deep so to test which type of cancer has the highest mortality rate, and which type of cancer has an improvement in the mortality rate. We can find that something as breast cancer, we improved from 75% reaching 91%. And for lymphoma, we improved from 47% reaching nowadays 74% survival rates. And finally, even for prostate cancer, which we have a lot of cases of prostate cancer, it's endemic in a lot of countries, 
we reached from improvement from 68% reaching 97%. Yet, we still have no success in some kind of malignancy. But now we have what we have to work on in the future. Focusing more in Egypt, in our country, we have approved the statistics according to the Global Can 2020 that the distribution is differing from worldwide. We have the liver cancer as the first cause of cancer, which diagnosed in Egypt, reaching 20% of cancers. Second, the breast cancer, mainly in female, reaching almost 70% of cancer. Then come for non hodgkin lymphoma, and lastly, the lung and the bladder. But this is a good data. I think it will be changed in the future because we are the first country to implement a program for liver regarding the treatment of HCV and virology. And during this stage, we diagnosed a lot of cases which diagnosed early, which have a lot of chances to be treated. And the main cause of having liver cancer in Egypt is the virus, virus C and virus B. And now having a good and promising eradication for this virology, I think this data will be changed within years. So, in the United States, dying from cancer has dropped steadily since the 90s and reached in some sort of cancer like breast cancer, prostate cancer, thyroid cancer to 90% or even better. This has all come from the early detection and the evolving of cancer treatment. So now we can reply our patient that cancer is not a cancer, a death sentence. It's totally a myth. We have a lot of promise and we have to be optimistic regarding cancer treatment. The cure rate and the definition of the cure rate that we reach, or the cancer patient reach, a chance of life expectancy as normal population. This word we heard not much in the previous and or the early decades. But in the last 10 years, it was promising that we reached in testicular and thyroid cancer up to 90% cure rate. And even in those, which is more common, like breast and prostate and bladder, we reach a 50% cure rate. It is imperative that patients who are diagnosed with cancer, even at advanced stage, don't lose hope. There are many effective and novel therapy, as well as more effective surgical techniques that we started to reach and to see than 40% of patients with a stage four, which is called previously a terminal disease of melanoma, are curable. And even cancer colon, with a combined modality of treatment regarding surgery and new modality of treatment, we can reach 50% of stage four as a cure rate. The battle of cancer is still ongoing, and science is making significant headway. So, for the mess that there is no cure of cancer, we can reply confidently that now we have a cure for some kind of cancers. <clears throat> and we have to go more further. We have to start the battle at an aerial stage. Yes, we are doing good and improving the treatment, but now we have to work on preventing cancer. This can give us a better and better chances of treating cancer and preventing cancer. And revising the data, we found that two factors are making a lot of incidence of cancer, like obesity and physical inactivity. So, the American Cancer Society addressed that. One of every five patients suffering cancer may be due to four risk factors, which is excess body weight and more nutrition, physical inactivity, and excess alcohol consumption, which thank God it's not endemic in our country. Those only four risk factors can cause more than 13 types of cancer. Yes, but it's not about the 13 types of cancer only. We found that some type of cancer, when come at obese patient and those who have basal metabolic index more than 30 can have some sort of aggressiveness in their cancers, which is totally alarming. In the United States, 
Excess body weight is thought to be responsible about 11% in women and 5% in men. And obesity is a preventable factor. We have to work on that. Working on that mainly by two factors, the dietary habits and the physical activity. We have to move from the Western type of diet to our Mediterranean type of diet. This can block a lot of chances to have cancer. And although the research has shown that cancer cells consume more sugar, yes, it is proved in the lab. But no studies till now shown that eating sugar will make you, your cancer worse, or even a stop of having cancer will make it shrink or disappear. However, there is an indirect link between having high sugar diet, which will lead directly to excess weight gain, and the obesity, which is associated directly, as we said before, with the developing of several types of cancer. So finally, we can reach a conclusion that eating sugar which will worth my cancer, it's a myth. And finally, if we are talking about the nutrition, it is really an incidence, and a high incidence nowadays, especially after the effect of social media, and uh, using that cancer patient may shift from cancer treatment, which is approved by guidelines, to have some herbal products, aiming to cure their cancer without side effects. Although, till now, no alternative or complementary proved to be treating cancer. But some of those kind of complementary therapies can cope with a side effect of cancer treatment. So, finally, we can say that no herbal products have been proved to show significant effect for treating cancer, and this should be considered as a myth. Going to the second predisposing factor, the physical activity during cancer treatment. And there was a interesting that we usually habituated to talk about cancer as a preventive, uh, uh, physical activity as a preventive factor of having cancer, and the cancer activity as a factor which impacts the survival. But for the first time, to have a meta-analysis which published that revised all the publication from 2017 to 2022, which tests the impact of physical activity during having the treatment of cancer, either chemotherapy or physiotherapy or even after and before surgery. And the focus was mainly or our, on our main aspects to test the physical activity impact. Is it controlling the side effect? The answer was yes physical activity reduce a side effect during treatment, which mainly in the form of the muscle cramps, neuropathy, pain, and GIT symptoms even. One of the major problems cancer patients suffer is fatigue. Is physical activity improving cancer patient fatigue? The answer was yes, that regular physical activity combined with an appropriate diet reduce the fatigue. And the fatigue may be keep the rate of decreasing till one year after finishing the treatment. And those was observed mainly in two types of cancer with high incidence, like the breast cancer and the colorectal cancer. Going to another factors, it's not only about physical health, it's about mental health. Physical activity has a possible impact on the mental health for cancer patients, reducing the anxiety, depression, and they have a positive impact on happiness and feel, feeling well-being. All of these items mean in treating cancer patients that we have an improvement in quality of life. That's one of our aim. And going further, does it affect mortality? The answer was yes. It affects mortality mainly in colorectal, breast, and prostate cancer. And even after finishing the treatment, does it affect the incidence of recurrence having cancer back? Yes, the answer was the combined aerobic and the resistance exercise reduce the incidence of metabolic syndrome. Metabolic syndrome is proved to be one of the risk factors of developing cancer recurrence. After all that, 
it was a must that the American Cancer Society of Diet and the Physical Activity Guidelines for Cancer develop their recommendation, which has to be followed for all cancer patients. You have to have an exercise, 150 to 300 minutes moderate exercise intensity per week, even during treatment, or 75 to 150 minute vigorous intensity activity, and not only for adults, but for adults and children and teens to maintain one hour physical activity per day. Having those regular exercise and limit our sedentary behavior, decreasing the screen time, the sitting around and lying down, for sure, it will almost cover 60% of having cancer. So finally, now after all of that, MDT is a standard approach for cancer treatment. But please, it's not only about oncosurgery, which uh, it is the core of cancer MDT, oncology, radio, radiology, pathology, psychosocial, and as we see, we have to include and expand our MDT beyond to have a nutrition and physiotherapy covering our patient, giving them more and more hope to fight cancer. Thank you.